Welcome fellow recovering traditionalists to episode 195, Up-Leveling Missing Part Activities to Build Deeper Mathematical Thinking. Welcome to Build Math Minds, the podcast, where fidelity to your students is greater than fidelity to your textbook. I'm your host, Christina Tonnevold, the recovering traditionalist and buildmathminds.com founder, where my mission is to change the way we teach elementary math to our kiddos. So are you ready to start building math minds and not just creating calculators? Let's get started. I was looking through the book, Putting Essential Understanding of Multiplication and Division into Practice in Grades 3 through 5 by NCTM, when I came across something that is actually going to be the focus of three episodes, this one being the first, about up-leveling missing part activities. Missing part activities are where students work with incomplete information. They're missing something. They're usually given a whole or total and then part of that whole, and then they need to figure out that missing part. Missing part activities are often used to help students build connections between inverse operations. So if three plus something equals eight, that's connected to asking what is eight minus three? Or six times blank equals 12, helps them see that connection between 12 divided by six. Now, a typical missing part activity is when students, like I said, know something like eight is the total or the whole, and five is one of the parts. Then they need to determine that three is that missing part. Or in a more visual scenario, if you, let's say you count out 10 objects with your students and then you hide some of them and you ask how many are hidden based upon what's still visible, right? They know the whole, they, they counted that out with you. It was 10, they can see part of it, but they can't see another part. That is a typical like missing part type activity. Now, inside the Build Math Minds PD site, we even have a slide deck of over 100 slides that are animated visuals just like that. A set appears, part of it disappears, and then you ask the students how many disappeared. We call it the disappearing act, <laughs> right? And it's for all, all grades. Like it, there's fractional ones, there's multiplication division. But after reading a part of that book, Multiplication and Division in Practice, I want to encourage you and myself to go beyond the typical missing part activity. Here's one example from the book. I'm gonna be sharing some more but in future episodes, but here's one from the book that made me really stop and think about our typical missing part activities. If you go to the show notes page, I'll have the picture there. The show notes page is buildmathminds.com slash 195. But for those of you listening via podcast, it says, determine the missing numbers in the following tasks. Explain your thinking for each part. A says 18 times six is the same as blank times 12. B says 24 times 12 is the same as six times blank. C is 200 divided by six is the same as 100 divided by blank. And then the final problem says 200 divided by six is the same as blank divided by 12. Now, it also made me imagine ones for addition and subtraction, right? Like you can imagine things like eight plus seven is the same as blank plus 10. The reason problems like this are such an important addition to put into your missing part activities is that you are building a more cohesive sense of what equality is in mathematics. And you are helping your students build big mathematical ideas through the properties of numbers that they are developing while thinking through these types of problems. A lot of students think that the equal sign means the answer comes next because they see problems like five plus six equals blank, or the missing part version of that is five plus blank equals 11. And it gets ingrained that the answer always comes after the equal sign. Even if you aren't saying that, the kids are seeing it constantly in the worksheets and textbook, activity, textbook activities that we give them. 
So you do need to do lots of activities that help students see that the equal sign actually means is the same as, and these examples that I just shared are exactly that type of activity. Now, when students are thinking through these types of problems, they are essentially developing the associative property. If you've forgotten which one that is, the associative property is when there is more than two numbers that are being added or multiplied together, and you can group them any way that you want, and the answer will stay the same. The way I help my kids understand that is that different numbers can associate or group, right? When you associate yourself with something, they can group or associate differently, right? But it still stays the same. You don't have to be in the same group all the time. It's still the same. So if you have something like three plus eight plus seven, I could group the three and seven together. I could associate the three and seven together and then add the eight and it would be the same answer as if I had just added them in the order that they are given. So when solving a problem like eight plus seven is the same as blank plus 10, they may not know it, but their brain is taking apart those numbers and associating them in different ways. So eight plus seven becomes something like five plus three plus seven in their brain. And then the three and seven combine or associate to make the 10 needed to figure out how to complete the missing part problem. Then when you're solving something a bit more complex, when we get into multiplication and you're solving something like the example given, which was 18 times six is the same as blank times 12, they can again use their understanding of maybe something like double and having, but also the associative property. Eight times six becomes nine times two times six because the two times six can associate together and that gives us the 12 that we need to help us figure out that problem. Now, even though I'm explaining these with the associative property, do not go teach that to your students. <laughs> the idea is to give them problems like these, but allow them to solve it in any way they can. They should have manipulatives out and modeling these problems. I'm only showing the formal associative property strategy with you so that you get an idea of the big mathematical ideas that these types of problems are helping your students build. Remember the LESH translation model we've talked about previously? Kids need to be doing all five of the different types of representations. And if you only do the associative property, you are just doing the abstract slash symbolic model with them. In the next episode, I'm going to share how to write problems like these into a real life context, which is one of those models in the LESH model which I also got from the Essential Understandings book. So if you don't have these Essential Understandings books, they are for all topics around mathematics. And I'll link to the whole series over at NCTM on the show notes page, which is buildmathminds.com slash 195. But for this week, I want to encourage you to use these missing part sentences, not at equations, write them out and use the phrase is the same as. Okay, you're going to use those as a number talk. Put one problem up on the board and have your students work on it. They may model, they may need manipulatives to help them out, right? But then once they've had some time to work on it, I want you to take five or seven minutes sharing a few different ways that students determine the missing parts, okay? Number talks are a great routine to get your students talking, but then looking at how the different strategies worked to solve the same problem. The idea of a number talk is one problem, I put two fingers up, but one problem, and you're talking about the different ways that kids came about that problem and the different strategies they had. So remember, it's important to focus on that reasoning process that your students have, not just the answer. The value is in how students think about the problem, not just whether they are giving that right answer. So doing the number talk is about sharing their thinking process and discussing how those different processes are similar and different. If you don't know already, I believe every day in math, your students should be doing a number routine, a contextual or word problem, whichever you call them, and a game. So this episode was a number talk, which is a number routine, 
that is designed to help you up level those missing part activities. Next episode will be an up level to word problems that have a missing part. And then the final episode on missing part, we're going to be exploring a couple of the games that I love that are focused on missing part. (laughs) Missing part problems are probably already in your repertoire, but if you're like me, they are probably just the standard, here's the hole, here's one of the parts, what's the missing part? And those are good, but let's up-level them to encourage a little bit more thinking, a better understanding of mathematical equality, and to help your students build those properties of number. So until next week, my fellow recovering traditionalists, keep letting your students explore math, keep questioning, and most importantly, keep building math minds.